Well, fine. Good morning, everyone. This is Patricia, and I am traveling for history. I'm in Shoreham, Vermont today, and um, let's look at this amazing building right here. This is the Shoreham Congregational Church. It's an historic church on School Road in Shoreham, Vermont. It says School Street, but it's actually on School Road. In fact, I can show you that. See? School Road. There's a school street. It's uh, right there, but it's a different street. <laughs> Google Maps got me right here, though, regardless of the uh, name difference. Anyway, this was built in 1846 by a local master builder and is one of the state's finest examples of ecclesiastical Greek Revival architecture and also housed local town meetings for more than a century. It was listed in the National Register of Historic Places in 2001. The Shoreham Congregational Church is situated prominently in the village center of Shoreham at the southwest corner of School and Main Streets. It is a single-story brick building with a gabled roof and stone foundation. Its front has a tall projecting portico with four fluted Doric columns rising to a full entablature. Okay, before I continue, let me uh, explain some of those terms. It's not about blah, blah reading. Okay, let's see. The first thing they said, well, we can see it's a brick building. That's not rocket science. The gable end typically is the one that's showing that's typically the front of a building of a Greek Revival style building. So the gable end, this is the gable end right here. Essentially a standard roof in the U.S. and the gable end is, is the triangular piece. Handy on that. The, uh, let me see, stone foundation. We can see that uh, displayed right over here. I'll zoom in for you. Ta-da, stone foundation. I'm going to do a walk around too and show you some more, uh, some more about this building. Uh, we'll do that together. It has a projecting portico. All right, what does that mean? It means that the front part of this porch is sticking out from the rest of the building. And uh, let me show you on the little bit of the side here. See how this is? sticking out, also known as projecting. That's what that means. Also, let's see. Four fluted Doric columns rising to a full entablature. Wow. Okay, so the entablature is uh, this piece right here that goes all the way around the building, actually. This piece goes all the way around. That's our entablature. Doric columns in the uh, three orders of ancient Greek columns, Doric is the most basic. So we can see they are topped with those um, square pieces of wood. Fluted means they have these, um, where's the thingy? Oh, the sun shines right on my viewfinder. There we go. All right, so see how it's not, uh, each column is not flat. They have these um, Ridges, those, that's the fluting. Those ridges are the fluting. All right. The door and window bays on the front and sides are articulated by brick pilasters. A brick pilaster, a, a pilaster period, is a column built into the wall. There's one there, and um, behind the, the, um, the uh, farthest, the outside Doric columns, and then on the edges, too. Also, on the other side of the front door, we have pilasters. And I'll zoom in for you. See? Pilasters. The gable above the portico is finished with multiple levels of trim. Sure is. Look at all those levels of trim. Holy cow. Beautiful. The tower that rises above the front is elaborately styled with a clock in the first stage and a belfry in the second. So we can see the clock and the belfry. The belfry, of course, is where the bell is 
is um, kept. See that beautiful clock and the belfry above, which is louvered. Its stages are basically square with camphored corners featuring panel sections on the clock stage and paired miniature ionic columns on the belfry stage. The tower is capped by an octagonal slate roof and weather vane. Ionic columns in the Greek order is the second uh, level of uh, columns. And they're the ones with the scrolls at the top. For Pete's sake. All right. See how at the top of the uh, columns there are those scrolls? Yeah, that's what makes it iconic. Um, ionic, rather. Iconic, too. But uh, the weather vane is right there. It tells us which way the wind is blowing. And uh, octagonal, octagonal means it's eight-sided. The first church congregation was organized in Shoreham in 1794, and its first meeting house was built in 1800. In the first half of the 19th century, Shoreham became a remarkably prosperous agricultural community. Its success derived from widespread cultivation of merino sheep. In 1846, the present edifice was constructed under the supervision of Jacob Lamb a regionally well-known master builder whose other credits include the Wilcox Cuts House in Orwell, another of the state's finest Greek revival buildings. The building's design is an original combination of designs taken from the publications of architect Asher Benjamin. The building's location on the town green was approved by the town, which requested permission to hold town meetings in the new building's basement. This use continued until 1956, when the meeting was moved to the local school, so 110 years. 110 years. All right, let's do a walk around of this building and uh, see if we can see uh, what else we can see here. Although I kind of wish the sunshine would continue today. It's supposed to thunderstorm this afternoon practically everywhere I would like to film. Um, it's also quite humid. We can see that the uh, handrails are a much later addition. They're not fancy at all. All this fancy uh, work on the church and the handrails are not. Although they do have that nice curved piece at the top. And the front door, wow, that's just massive. It says welcome, doesn't it? In its, in its own imposing way. But we can see that the columns, that these flutes on here, need to be painted. We can also see cracking down here. You can see this side also needs some work. My best guess is that the congregation is dwindling. I haven't seen a sign yet that tells me when the services are offered here, if at all. But it does have a gutter system, so that helps. Lots of cracking on here, too. It's nice to see plants, but uh, uh, they can let water get into the foundation. You're going to think I don't like uh, any trees or plants, which is untrue. I do actually love trees and plants, but they just shouldn't be near buildings or in graveyards. Alrighty, I do see, oh, is that a hole? That might be a hole up there, I'm not really sure. Lovely stained glass windows. These are pretty big windows down here, holy cow. Lots of stuff in the basement. I don't think we're going to be able to see anything in there. There's this extra level of pucks of glass that helps with the winter. Especially if they're still using the original glass. 
Oh yeah, the hip flexor glass all the way down. In fact, looks like, yes, the upper windows also have plexiglass on them. I don't think this one does, but the others do. Storm windows, yes, yeah, storm windows. But this, this window here looks like it's slightly ajar. See what I mean? It's leaning in a bit. Well, I decided to come down and see what this, this uh, is right here. And um, there is another video I've offered on this, um, on a state historic marker. This says, in memory of Levi Parsons Morton, born at Shoreham, Vermont, May 16, 1824, died at Rhinecliff, New York, May 16, 1920, member of Congress, minister to France, governor of New York, vice president of the United States of America. He was born uh, on this land, in this place. And we see also this um, flag right here waving in the Marines, and uh, it says U.S. on it. It doesn't say if he served in any military capacity, but if you're a member of Congress, a minister of France, a governor of New York, or VP, vice president of the U.S., then you're going to have a flag on your grave. Although I don't think he's, he's not buried here. He's buried in New York, but it's a memorial for him. All right, let me continue walking around. You have a better idea of the windows here. Oh yeah, I see. Problem here on the eve. And we have another view of the tower, the belfry with the clock tower. Beautiful plant right here. I think uh, maybe a lilac. If I turn on smell vision right now, you would not like it. It smells like cow manure because it's, there's plenty of farmland here. And you see farmland right over there. Holy cow. Look how beautiful that is. And barns. Barns over here. Well, those barns are looking uh, weathered, all that. I don't think, they may not be used as barns anymore, but more like garages. And here we have more pilasters on the back wall. Uh, no windows, but this, uh, you can see the stone foundation very well back here. With a door inset, and that beautiful pediment on the other side, the other end, end of the gable roof. Handicap door. It's quite nice. Let's move it in closer. See if we can see anything inside. Another sign that lets us know. It's a handicap entrance. I see some kitchenware. Oil tank. In case you haven't seen one of those before, this is an oil tank. Easier to fill when they're outside. And a propane tank as well. You can see that it's a, a bit of a a bit of a climb to get up the side of the hill there. But hey, I've got my cane and I've got the ability. So Let's just do that. Side entrance. And 
Let me see a chimney on this side. That right there that is protruding out of the roof. You can see my photographs on Instagram and Facebook under Traveling for History, 1L and Traveling. Put quotation marks around it and you'll find it really easily. Some more lovely stained glass windows. Oh, I can see stairs. Guessing maybe to the choir loft. And let's see. Over here. I don't ever try doors to ch churches, but I remember when I was a kid, the churches in the U.S. tended to be unlocked so people could walk in and worship when they wished to. But I'm pretty sure they're all locked down these days. Because you never know what someone's going to do, do you? A little storage up there, too. Alrighty, well, and we can see the ceiling in there needs to be uh, painted, and we can even see a bird's nest up there. Well, this is Patricia, and I am traveling for history. Really appreciate your coming along with me today, watching the video, and uh, exploring this place with me. Until I see you again, I hope you have a great day. And subscribe. Please subscribe to my videos if you're enjoying the content. Thanks so much. Until I see you again, have a good day. Thanks for watching.